It's actually uh, time to do new, new products. Yay. You guys ready for new products? We're gonna have a jingle one day. New product, new, new product, new products. All right, new all the stuff to new products. Um, because we're tight on time, Lady Ada. I what, won't use the overhead. I'll just talk. What about I want it. you to do is talk about this. I'll introduce it. So Circuit Playground 1.6 is out. Oh my God! It should not end. It good, is good a massive, massive, massive update. So unbelievable. Tell we people have what these screens are. Heat sink calculator. You want to calculate your heat sink based on the ambient temperature. The power you're dissipating, the uh, thermal resistance of your case, of your die, of your heat sink, of your oh, everything. Sure. Go for it. Use this calculator. It's so easy. It'll tell you uh, if your heat sink is good enough for what you want to do. Yeah, Next up, nice. we have a quarter wave calculator. For when you don't have a VNA and you're like, well, I just want a piece of wire to do this job for me. Uh, which I've actually done a couple times if you're doing like an FM antenna or AM radio antenna. Well, AM radio probably not, but uh, FM antenna or, um, yeah, you know, you're using like for like a 900 megahertz or 450 megahertz or something, or even a 2.4 megahertz. You want to know how long to cut your little piece of wire. Uh, this will tell you, and it'll get you pretty damn close to 50 ohms. Uh, next up, we have a voltage uh, divider, resistor divider calculator, so you can calculate, you know, the voltage in, out, whatever, based on your resistance or calculate the resistance based on the voltage you want. It's all around voltage divider calculator. We have a color to wavelength calculator. So you're like, I have this um, frequency of the wavelength of my E&M stuff, but I want to know what that looks like when it hits my eyeballs. Uh, this will tell it you. It burns. That's if, the color. Yeah, it burns. The goggles, they do nothing. We have, <laughs> a, we have a, a pinout. Um, we have a whole bunch of pinouts. I mean, it's unending. We have RS-232, RJ-45, VGA, Raspberry Pi. I think we have Arduino uh, chips still. We have Max 232, 7805, 7805s, um, more stuff. I don't remember. Trace with calculator. Also, when you want to know, uh, this is not for the impedance, but this will tell you your power dissipation. So if you're like, well, I have an amp going through this, and I want to make sure that I have a thick enough trace, it will tell you your trace width and uh, voltage drop and resistance. Uh, so it's all good. Okay, and uh, this last one, um, this is an enhancement to the show and tell feature. So if you have the app on an iPhone or an iPad, you can take a photo of your project or use the, any photo from your um, camera roll. Um, and uh, also videos now. So you can send Adafruit a video or a photo and multiple attachments wow. uh, to us. And we post it up on the site. And uh, we, we've been giving away stickers and stuff like that. Yes. Um, K-Town, you're an engineer. Is this uh, K-Town approved? Is this is this a uh, good uh, app for people? This is K-Town licious. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then, and then does it work on the new iPhone 5, Matt? You have an iPhone uh, 5? Yeah. yeah, it just wow. arrived today. He waited, he waited in line two days for that. You have a white one. Wow, that's kind of cool looking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, um, uh, it's working just great. I recommend it. And uh, I'm wondering, I don't know for sure if this will work, but if you're looking at putting, you know, hitting uh, some RGB... LED lights with a color. You want to check to see the uh, enclosure, what it will look like with the lights. Oh yeah, this put, should this should work. Yeah, so you, you can put it in there like that. So you get, oh, oh, I see. Wait, so like maybe this, this yeah. you know, this is going to reflect a lot. Okay, great. Very cool. And just a reminder, LED um, simulator. They probably didn't think of that yeah, when they came up with the yeah. iPhone. Phone. The the cost of the app, you get a coupon in the app, so it's basically free. So Yay. Yeah. And it's uh, doing really well. Educators are picking this up a lot. It's being used in schools quite a bit. We got emails from. Um, teachers. So I want a K-Town Licious badge. Working on it. <laughs> okay. I'll lick it, I'll lick I'll lick it personally. I'm talking to his deal. agent. That's so gross. <laughs> and we're, si we're signing the rights uh, okay. soon. Okay. So um, that, 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 that is a new product-ish because it it's is, a download. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's some keep moving on. Some more software. Yeah. Um, this is just a, a 3.5 millimeter stereo to RCA jack. This is some people were asking for this for the Raspberry Pi because they want to plug into their TVs. Like they have HDMI TVs or NTSC TVs and they want audio. Um, we also have, um, this is a sharp distance sensor. We've already carried the, like the 10 to 80 centimeter um, sharp distance sensor. This is the one that does like 20 to 150 mm -hmm. centimeter or something. Um, so it's just a longer range. It's a little bit more expensive, but um, these are really, really easy to use. They're very popular for, for beginner projects. We have panel mount HDMI cables. Um, they, we have to look uh, very far mm -hmm. and hard for I've these cables because these are definitely weird. Mm -hmm. But it's basically an extension cord with like, you know, and they have these molded ears on them and so you can panel mount them. Um, it can't be too thick because you know, the cable has to plug in or they can mount from behind too. Like you could like attach uh, an M3 or I think an M2 uh, metric screw from the other side. So that's kind of handy. Okay, and then we have a couple of Raspberry Pi related things and then we have one new um, special breakout board. Um, I have that camera thing going on today. 
Um, the uh, Raspberry Pi stuff we have is the Pi bows are now in stock. These are beautiful cases. Yeah. And uh, maybe we'll go to the overhead in just a second. So these are the rainbow colored ones, and these are in stock right now. And uh, then and have the super special. And edition. then they sent us um, a limited edition one, and they uh, said that they had enough plastic for more. So you'll be able to get an Adafruit one soon. So I'm going to go to the overhead with uh, with Matt. So this is uh, the Adafruit version. Yeah, it's like cool blue. I kind of like it. It's like this translucent blue. Yeah. yeah. So they have enough plastic to make 50 of these. So we might, we might do a limited edition version of it. Okay. Yeah, it's got the, um, we also have the little card adapters in, and I think we put them in the store this yeah. week, yeah? Yeah, we sold out, I think. We sold out. Well, we're making more, so we have the little, um, a low-profile adapters, that's why you don't see the card sticking out, because on the bottom, if you look carefully, yeah, it's got the little adapter, but it has it built in, so if you turn it upside down, yeah, see it? Yeah, look at that. So, um, you can put S a micro SD card in, so, um, you don't have a SD card sticking out. Yeah. Okay. card adapter. And, uh... Also designed by K-Town. Yeah. Good job on that. All right, and next up, um, this is a really exciting product because we uh, it's so cool we can't ship it out of the country. So this is the new uh, gyro board. Yeah, so we, we've, we wanted to have a gyro board. People were asking us if we have accelerometers. Um, so this gyro is based on, this is like the latest gyro available on the market from ST. It's the L3G D20, which is um, full three axis, so it does X, Y, and Z. Um, it has um, adjustable scale, so you can do 250, 500, or 2,000 degree per second scaling. Um, we had some space on the on the breakout board. We wanted to have four mounting holes so we could attach it really solidly because, like, we'd seen gyros that had, like, one hole in them. And it's like, well, if you're measuring twist, you don't want to have one mounting point. You want to have at least two. Mm -hmm. uh, and we actually just went and, like, splurged for four. Um, it does SPI and I2C, and we have an example code for the Arduino that uses both. Um, so you can use SPI if you want to, you know, if you have a microcontroller and you don't want to use the I2C pins for some reason. I2C is the easiest, it only uses two pins. There's a data ready and interrupt pin if you want to use those. Um, we don't have it in our example code because we don't care too much about that speed or interrupts, but um, check out the data sheet for more details. Uh, it's, a, it's a great gyro. Um, it, you know, is perfect for any kind of like, you know, inertial measurement or if you're doing like a 3D motion capture or something, uh, combine this with an accelerometer and uh, you've got like lots of motion capture stuff and you can do. And let's go to the back of this. Uh, K-Town, can you explain what all these things are, what they mean? And uh, maybe we'll go to the other hand after that. Okay. You know what this, what, what all this means on the back of the board? Uh, put it there. Yeah. <laughs> now you got to tell um, it. That was like weeks ago. <laughs> uh, no pressure. Basically, yeah, you, you, you can control the, the sampling rate. Uh, on the on the chip, uh, depending on the, I think the resolution goes down uh, depending on the sampling rate that you choose. Uh, that well, there's a high pass and low pass filter built in as mm -hmm. well, so you can set that. Um, but yeah, I think I think there, it probably has a fixed resolution. Like you don't get better resolution; it just gives you Folks better scaling. Folks want they want to know what the sensitivity is. I uh, check the data sheet. Yeah, I don't I don't have it off the top of my head what the sensitivity is, okay. and, the, and the drift. It's like a, it, obscure. It, it it is actually when I was testing these out. Uh, they they are fairly consistent. There's not like this this huge uh, spread when you're in a static position with the range. Some I've tried some other chips where you you move it a little bit and you have this gigantic jump. Yeah, uh, so but it just seems pretty smooth. But yeah. it, it does have full 16-bit resolution. So yeah. divide that by degree per second, and that's the resolution. Because I've seen some some 16-bit accelerometers or ADCs, and it, it's just a marketing number because. The, la the four, last four bits are noise you, you, anyway. You can, you can spit out 16 bits on any chip, but if it's not a good 16 bits of data, or if it's not at least a good, say, 12 bits of data, then it's just a marketing number that yeah. somebody somebody looks at. But it, it is, uh, I, I, I did find the chip fairly stable in, in, uh, in the readings, and that's not the case for some other uh, chips that we have tested. So. Yeah, this is it's a pretty good gyro. So I, I, like, I think this is like, I mean, it's a digital gyro. We'll all look for analog ones as well, but... Um, this is pretty much the one we decided yeah. on. And just to be clear, uh, why can't this be shipped outside the U.S.? Um, well, we, we purchased the chips from Future, and they said these are export restricted. So Some things are export there, restricted. Until we figure out exactly why and what, we're just decided, like, well, we'll just make it really clear. Like, you can only purchase this in the U.S. Mm. Um, we'll figure out exactly what the export restrictions are, mm. and we'll do more research about it. Um, and if it's something that we can export, uh, we will. 
Um, but we just want to yeah, we follow the rules. Follow the rules to start, mm-hmm. and then figure out uh, what exactly the rules are. Okay. Yeah, it does. It is. It is complicated. I think for things like ADCs, there's restrictions on mm-hmm. anything above 16 bits, and mm-hmm. it is pretty mm-hmm. complicated. Mm-hmm. To, uh, but it depends on like what it is, and if it's a specification. Yeah, yeah. So you, we have to yeah, you have to look it up. It, it is pretty complicated. I, I've I've seen products in companies that they spend a million dollars on something made for the Chinese market. I saw this with some uh, some wireless uh, base stations for for GSM. The company spent millions of dollars designing them, and they couldn't ship them because yeah. they found out later because of some export restrictions. Oh, wow. uh, uh, maybe Matt can show the size of this thing on the overhead real quick. Um, I'm on the overhead. Yeah, so I see the small board too. One, I also have one attached to a, 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 a back there if you want to pick it up. Yeah, right there. Yeah. So that's that, the attached. So it's fairly small. I mean, um, all the, the level shifting stuff does take a little bit of space, but... It's a fairly expensive chip, you know, comparatively. So adding, you know, a couple of, of chips and components to make it five volt safe was worth it, and it's five volt mm-hmm. compliant both on I squared T and SPI. The icons so. came out good as well. Yeah, and the icons came out really nice. Yeah. Came out nice. Okay, those new products. We did it. It was new. We showed it off. <laughs>